Hey, it's Jordan Ganey. I play basketball at Tennessee. And you're listening to the No Playbook Podcast. All right. Hey, thanks for checking out the show. It's the podcast where we talk with the outstanding athletes, coaches, and experts that help to make sports and fitness such an important part of life here in the Southeast. I'm so glad it's finally basketball season. Tennessee Falls have uh, they've got a great roster this year, some extremely high expectations. Sure has been a, a tough couple of uh, first weeks they've had to play with Purdue, then Kansas, and at North Carolina all in a row. But uh, joining me on the show today is a uh, new guy on the Vols, Jordan Ganey. He transferred to Tennessee from South Carolina Upstate, where he was their leading scorer last season. Jordan's dad is actually coach Justin Ganey for the Vols, so of course we talk about what that's like playing for his dad. We talk about the uh, recent trips for the Vols to Italy and Honolulu, uh, and we even get into some fun superlatives for current players on the team with him. Actually, I did this with Josiah Jordan James when he was on the podcast just a few weeks ago. So if you love the Vols, go back, check out that episode as well. Now, I tell you, we actually recorded this episode the day after Tennessee's game in uh, Chapel Hill against UNC. So that's actually the, the first thing we talk about. I'll get to Jordan Ganey right after this. Sit tight. Recruit Me puts the recruiting process in your hands. Most student athletes wait for college coaches to discover them, but coaches are busy and don't always have the time to find them. Recruit Me allows you to build an online profile to share directly with college coaches and is designed to help you enter all of the information coaches want to see. Your stats, your highlight videos, your academic information, your social links, and more. Plus, our team is here to make sure that your profile stands out with personalized suggestions. With over 25,000 coaches in our database, our premium plan gives you access to D1, D2, D3, and NAIA coaches across the country. And more importantly, gives them access to you. Enter your schedule of games and tournaments to let coaches know when and where you're playing so they can come out and watch you shine. Then communicate with interested coaches via our chat feature. When it comes to recruiting, don't make coaches research you. Do the work for them. Get started today at the Recruit Me app, on the web, and in the app stores. At D1 Training, what we do is in our name. Our D1 athletes become D1 athletes. Whether it's Los Angeles Angels pitcher Ben Joyce, high school soccer national MVP Brindley Murphy, or first-round NFL draft pick Cole Strange, we help all athletes reach their full potential. Five-star training system comes straight from D1 strength and conditioning programs, and D1 has trained over 2,000 professional athletes. Many of them started as young as seven years old. Check out D1Training.com to learn more about their facilities in Hardin Valley and Sevierville, and coming very soon to Maryville and the Tri Cities. Some unexpected meetings and things and treatment came along today. Oh, I get it. I get it. It's uh, it's part of the gig, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess you guys had a big night last night too. What was what was that whole experience like? It was a good experience. A great learning experience for sure. Um, but it was fun. Definitely a fun atmosphere. They were great. Uh, it's not many people get to play in the gym that Michael Jordan got to play in. So you really get to think about it as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually, so a funny thing is I had a thought about your dad mm-hmm. um, at the game because being a former NC State player. Right. Uh, the, the, the hatred that goes along with that. So Jordan, I actually grew up um, in that area, my dad went to NC State, so mm-hmm. we we went to tons of Wolfpack games when I was a kid. Like I remember your dad um, on the team, like going going to games there. Um, what was it called? Reynolds Coliseum, I believe it was at the time. Yeah, Reynolds. Reynolds, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I was like, I wonder if he's just like feeling extra hatred. But a game last night, I mean, you score when you score eighty two points on the road, you expect to win the game, right? Right. They just uh they they were they were on fire and you could hear through the TV they were super loud, the fans. Definitely. Definitely. Well, what has that been like having a dad uh on the staff with you? It's been good, you know. This is my first time ever, like first time him coaching me. So it was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh at first it was different, but then it's like we just take the father son aspect out of it. And it's like more business whenever we're on the court and then like at home, we still watch film together and just chill and like 
and the homie's dad. He's not really coach. Like over the holidays, if you're just you know sitting back watching a game, can you still can you guys still just watch a game like just for fun, or does this does it turn into like a breakout session of of uh, when you're watching yeah. film? Yeah, now we still watch games for fun. Like we'll always watch. Like we got an NBA TV, so we'll watch like four different games at once and just watch them all and just just chill and just see what we both think and it's just just have a good time, you know. That's pretty cool. Um, has he been able to pass along anything to you? Just having, um, you know, success in in the ACC as a player himself. Um, now with you on a bigger stage. But yeah, he's always just giving me uh, advice and breaking down film for me, and just seeing what he sees or telling me what he sees on the court, and just to really just make things easier for me, and just so I can be able to bring what he's telling me on like through film and what he sees. And me putting it into aspects on in, in the game. Yeah. So now I had uh Josiah on the podcast um a few weeks ago. And one of the questions I asked him was uh because it was like right before you you played that Michigan State exhibition. And I said, So at this point, we don't know a lot of these newcomers. So tell me by the time we even get to Christmas, who are people that we don't know of right now, but we're really gonna know of. And like the first two things, he was like, I think Jordan Gainey was the first name he said. And then he, of course, said Dalton and Freddie. Right. right. So is there anybody he left off that we're going to know about by the end of the season? We're going to know about all of them, really. Uh, we got, you saw JP Estrella. You saw Kay Phillips. Uh, everybody. Cam Carr. Yeah. Cam Carr is about to, he's getting it going. But everyone, like all of our younger guys are really just putting in the work every day and you can just see them grow day by day and it's just amazing to see and they're just all putting in the work and they're all buying in which is great yeah well um speaking of all that work you're putting in uh i think think you had the most minutes on the whole team for the italy uh trip mm-hmm. I, i'd like to hear about just what that was like basketball wise and just like as a tourist even it was fun uh just being able to play over like in another country and see how the competition is over there was just amazing. It was all around a great trip, just being able to tour Italy, going to see the Coliseum, and just really just being around the guys. That was probably the my best part about the trip, just being around everyone and being able to like build a bond with each other and just you know walk the city, just be normal, be like normal tourists, and just have fun. You get any good food while you're there? For sure, there's definitely some great food spots. I don't know the name of them. There's some good food spots, definitely. Yeah. Did you learn any Italian while you're there? Uh a little bit. I only like two words though. I got grazie. Okay. That's the only one. That's the only one. And ciao. And ciao. Okay. Bella. Yeah, I got that one too. Um well, uh another trip, of course, the the Maui invitational. That that was uh, a pretty cool experience, I'd I'd imagine. Yeah, it was great. It was another it was a high level tournament again. It was very fun to compete in. Uh, Honolulu was a beautiful place. Definitely could uh, retire out there and just vibe out. But uh, it was just it was a nice experience having seeing all these all these teams and just playing in this com- competing in this one big tournament that was just amazing to see and being able to see other guys around, just walking around and seeing all the other teams is pretty cool as well. Yeah. But playing Purdue and then Kansas, like that is just grueling. And then come back and play North Carolina on the road. Is there anything just from this three game stretch that you think the the, the team is going to really, I guess, take take from this and uh, you know make themselves better throughout the season? Yeah, I feel like we learned a lot over these past three games, and uh, just definitely giving us more a more edge to us, more chip on our shoulder because. We know how good we can be, and just being able to play in those high-level games, are they're just gonna get us better. And like whenever January, February, March comes, it'll be those are the kind of games we're gonna be playing in. And it's just great to already have those in November, and just really build off those, learn and grow, and carry it over to the next games we play. Yeah, I actually read a, a good article today. It was talking about you know despite the loss last night. It was suggesting that Tennessee still got a win, and that they found a little more great way to use Jonas. Mm-hmm. 
So I, I think, you know, those little lessons right here in November can pay off in March. Right. Yeah. Jonas was really big for us last night. He played amazing. Uh, and we think he's just as good as all the other bigs is there is in the country. He really is. And he really showed that last night and really over these past three games. And we've all known it since the summer. And we just got to get him the ball. And that's and we all trust him. Everyone trusts him. All 16 of us trust him with the ball in his hands. What about um, your experience at uh, USC Upstate? I mean, other than the the obvious, like the speed, is there any other kind of a major difference that you've noticed so far? Um, I'd say just the physicality and just how how much bigger guys are is the biggest thing. I'd say there's those three things: speed, physicality, and just the how much bigger everyone is. But those three things are probably the biggest things I would. I'd say the difference is. But other than that, I'd say, um, like, even guys at USC Upstate, like, when we would go and play a Tennessee or go play at South Carolina, everyone would still have that same chip on their shoulder. Everyone wants to everyone wants to go out there and win, and everyone has that confidence and uber confidence that they can go and do that. How about just on campus? Is there anything that you've uh, – th that you love so far about UT? Definitely. Um, it's just – like the campus is beautiful. It's and you see like so many people on campus. But like at Upstate, you still we got a smaller campus at, at Upstate, but it's like you still see a lot of people. But it's not as many as you're gonna see at UT, and it's just it's just two different two different spectrums, I'd say, from those two aspects. But um, that's great. And then Saturdays on on game days, being able to go see Tennessee play in uh, Neyland is always amazing. Seeing all the fans walk to the stadium and just go cheer on the balls. And that's just a cool sight to see. Does Upstate have a football team? No, we don't. No football team. Um, What about off the court training? Do you do anything in the way of like working on vertical or speed and agility, that kind of stuff? Yeah, and definitely. Um, Coach G is always working with us about three, four times a week uh, just to get, just to stay, stay in shape, stay strong and, keep everything, keep everything how it's supposed to be and not lose an ounce of anything. And he's just, he's really great at that. He's one of the best in the business. And over the summer, we're always, we're working always. We're in the weight room, on the court, off uh, individual workouts, doing everything and getting extra work in the weight room. But it's just great because she's great. Yeah. Do you know Avery Jamison? He worked with uh, you guys doing some stuff, I think, in the summer. For sure, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, he uh, he's a buddy. He works or he, he worked with us at D1 for a while. Um, so that's kind of cool. That, and that's obviously at D1 what we are always working with, you know, helping folks improve the, the little things even without a ball um, in their hand. What do you have like a favorite if you're in the weight room, favorite workout? Um, Not really a favorite workout. It's just I just like getting to it for real. It's like whatever we got to do, just go ahead and get to it because I know whatever we do is going to be is going to be great for me like whatever I do yeah hey how about when you were a kid did you have like um like a basketball hero growing up Kobe for sure I was always I've always been a big Kobe fan since I was like little I remember watching it was the he was in the finals in 2010 I remember watching that and uh just, I've always just been a Kobe fan growing up. I've always worn his shoes, but now they're a little they're through the roof now, so it's hard to get them. But if I can get my hands on a pair, I'd definitely wear his shoes. But, yeah, I've always looked up to Kobe. Yeah. So now, Jordan, one thing I ask everybody on the show, share with me a an unforgettable sports memory, and it doesn't have to be, like, as a player. It could even be something as a spectator. Hmm. I got two. I go one from a spectator, and then one from like my experience. My my experience was whenever I played, obviously last year in the quarterfinals against Gardner Webb, and I hit the game winner to send us to the semifinals. That was great. Um, and then another one as a spectator would be. I think it was the year of 2019, 2020, right before COVID came. 
uh, watching Prey and Pritchard go off for uh, 35 and McHale. And they end up winning the game. Yeah, yeah. It's and- awesome. Um, did, were you, did you have to watch uh, the Wolfpack growing up? Yeah, I did. I definitely did. I, another one, I remember they beat UNC at, at uh, I think it was it was I think it was RBT Center then or a it was another center, but they beat them there and they stormed the court. I just remember like all the fans jumping over like me and my mom's head and just storming the court and having fun. So that's something else I do remember. Those are always good. Any any uh, Duke or UNC victory for the track is is one to celebrate for sure. Right. Right. Um. So now, quick uh, speed round with uh some players on your team mm-hmm. funniest guy on the team Freddie DeLeon. okay uh longest who, who who's gonna have the longest playing career Ooh, i'm gonna say either josiah or um toby interesting interesting uh, who would be the best coach, do you think? Santi, Santiago. Oh, yeah. I think somebody told me that. Um, and then I've heard uh, Zakai as well. Yeah, Z would definitely be on there, too. For that one. Um, yeah. Who would you least want to date your sister? <laughs> um, Grant Hurst. Okay. And then who could best talk their way out of a speeding ticket? Zakai Ziegler. Oh, wow, really? Is he smooth? Yeah, he'll definitely get himself out of a parking ticket. That's great, man. I uh, I really appreciate it. I'll put this together, probably have it out next week, and I will uh, tag you and all that good stuff. Sounds good. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks, dude. Have a good one, man. You too.